Hey guys, I'm Corey with Blow Up Pine Freeze Dryers. I just wanted to talk a little bit today about what freeze drying actually is. So a lot of you think about freeze drying as taking a Skittle and turning it from this into this. And that is true. So a lot of candy is going to puff up like that. And uh, But let's talk about what it actually does to the food in order to get it to look like that. So with freeze drying, what happens is you freeze the food first. And what that, what that does is it freezes the water in the food into ice crystals. And then what it does is it goes and it pulls a vacuum on the food. So you take the pressure and you re reduce the pressure in this chamber. That's why you need the vacuum pump. And then after the vac after the, the vacuum is pulled on the chamber, like the pressure is reduced, then you slowly start to heat the food uh, in the chamber. So what that does is pulling the vacuum on the food, it actually helps reduce the boiling point of the water. So everybody knows that, you know, at higher altitudes, water boils just a little bit less, it takes a little bit less time to boil water or it, you know, boils with less, less heat because there's lower pressure. It's the same exact, exact thing inside this chamber, but it's just a little bit more exaggerated. So inside this chamber, it's almost a perfect vacuum. So let's talk about some things that work with freeze drying and things that don't work with freeze drying. So things that are going to work are going to be things like strawberries or fruits or vegetables out of your garden, bananas, uh, things like that that have water content are going to work. Meat is another good example of something that works. So chicken or ground beef, even eggs, those work really well. Things that don't work though are going to be things with high fat content. So butter isn't going to work cream kind of just marginally works and then things like chocolate or lard those really aren't going to work at all because they don't have enough water content in them so those are some things that work with freeze drying and some things that don't work with freeze drying because again with freeze drying all you're doing is you're taking out the water content in the food so one of the best reasons to freeze dry is just the the shelf life and the nutrition content of the food so these are raspberries that we did in our machine they turn into a nice hard uh, very delicate fruit and there's no water in them, but these will keep for 30 years on the shelf. So they've got a 30-year shelf life on them, very easily 30 years on them. Uh, another thing that you can do are things like meats. So meats will be shelf stable for 15 to 20 years very easily. And with some meats, if you get a low fat content, you could push that up to 30 years. Uh, shelf stable with you know meat like chicken or ground beef. Uh, so that's one of the, the key factors is that, you know, Freeze drying, it helps preserve the nutrition of the food for about 30 years, which is something that, you know, canning and like, you know, jerky and like other drying processes really just can't do. So along with the, the shelf stable or like the shelf life of it, uh, you also have the nutrition content. So these are two examples of spinach powder. So this spinach powder actually came off of my shelf. I use this every morning. Uh, it goes into my, into my shakes. Whereas this is something that I bought at the store. So this is, I mean, just in the color alone, you can kind of see that, you know, this one obviously has more nu nutrition in it. They say that this one was a, a cold process, but it was more likely actually a hot process where they boiled it and then threw it out a hot plate. But this is what freeze-dried spinach should look like. Nice deep green color. But uh, anyways, when I reconstitute this, it turns right back into a green smoothie. Whereas this, when I reconstitute it, it kind of just looks like chalk in water. But that's kind of one of the, the key factors when it comes to uh, freeze-drying is just that the nutrition content is much higher than other processes like canning or boiling or things like that. One of the other things with freeze drying is just cost savings. So doing this yourself versus buying the freeze dried food at the store. So if I was going to go out to the store and buy like, you know, freeze dried food out of a bag or, you know, out of a box or something or a can, you know, it would cost about 10 bucks a meal for, like per person. Whereas with this, you know, I've got five trays where I can do practically a meal per tray. And, you know, that's saving me pretty much like 50 bucks per meal that I'm doing in here. Obviously, there's a cost of the food, cost of the energy, but it is a significant cost savings when you're looking at, you know, going camping or hunting or, you know, things like that, uh, or even just emergency preparedness. You know, buying freeze-dried food can get super expensive. These machines, they are kind of pricey. They're about $3,000 a piece. But when you look at it, you know, it really starts to make sense in the long run when it's, you know, costing you $50 for five bags of freeze-dried food versus, you know, just a few dollars per load, especially if you're just doing leftovers, you know, you can just throw your leftovers right in and turn those into camping meals, things like that. The cost savings really start to make sense in the long run and it can easily pay itself off within the first year. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what freeze drying is and some of the benefits of freeze drying. But if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. But thanks for watching.